everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Week in Review, a video that we put out here at the Dice Tower each Monday morning to tell you the previous week's stuff we did. And then we give you kind of a short summary of each of these things. And then you, if you want to see the full review or the full video, you can check the links in the description below. Okay, so here we go. Hi, I'm Wendy Yi, and this week I reviewed two games. The first one was Hamlet. I gave this a five. And it was a very, very low five. Like, when I'm going around and putting my scores in BGG, I might even lower it again to a four. We'll see. Um, eh, Production-wise, everything was uber tiny. Mechanically, game-wise, I definitely felt like there were some big flaws in it. And so I just, mm, not a fun game. Sadly, I went into it really hoping for something more, but not great. Now we have Pollen. Pollen looked like this cute game. I love butterflies. I love flowers. I love growing things, all that wonderfulness. Um, it ended up being a very intense game. So I gave it a five. Also another five. This was a, a higher five, a more normal five. And so I, I really got frustrated with it. It is a game where you're trying to kind of have area majorities around these bugs so you can collect them. It sounded all serene and peaceful and it got really head to head intense. Not my kind of game whatsoever. I think mechanically it's probably fine, um, but not for me in any way, shape or form. Never want to play it again. Uh, so I gave it a five. So anyways, that was my week this week. Let's hope next week I'll get some more positive games, more scores that I like. But as it is, let's see who's next. This week I took a look at Gotcha, which is a super cute like um, set collection game where you're just trying to collect cards and the back of the card kind of shows you what your odds are of getting the different cards of different types to do these different sets. Super, super quick, super, super simple game. I gave it a seven. It's just light and fun to play with my girlfriend. And that's all I looked at this week. All right, this week, I first of all started off with a rapid fire roundup. I looked at six different games in that one, so check it out for my thoughts on those, as well as the ratings. I think I went from a three to an eight, so quite a, a slew of games there. Be sure to check it out. Also, I roll, I rolled, I reviewed Roll to the Top, a roll and write game. Um, I thought this one was really interesting. I came in at an eight on, on it. I thought that the most innovative part of it was the simplicity and that was just so refreshing. It's a very refreshing roll and write where right out of the gate you know how to play. Each of the map provides a little bit different challenge and a little bit different leeway as well in, some, in the case of some of them. So I really liked it. Roll to the top. I also checked out The Animals of Baker Street. Oh my goodness was I blown away by this game. I was brought or drawn into it because of the look and the aesthetics and one of the few games that I can get my son to play with me are kind of these choose your own adventure story cooperative games. This game checked just about every box. I thought it was fantastic for kids. It was engaging for adults, had very simple mechanisms that were handled in a unique and creative way so that it felt fresh. And each case, it comes with, I believe, seven of them and a tutorial. Each case feels unique. So a fantastic, I came at it a nine for it, which would be a seal of excellence. That's going to be it for me this week. Let's keep it rolling. Hey everybody, Chris here. This week I took a look at five games, the first of which was Hamlet. I gave a four. I really didn't like this one. Mechanically, it was... Uh, mechanically, it had some issues. Production-wise, it had some issues. Hard to read the board state, hard to read the tiles and everything. I'm not going to come back to it, so it's a four for Hamlet. Next up, Dwarf Romantic. I gave a five. I know that I'm coming in particularly low. This is my score. I wouldn't really want to play this one too much more. There are other cooperative tile lane games I'd sooner come back to, but I could see this one being very popular with people who like the the zen and the the happy kind of uh, production feel of from the video game, and maybe they would like this board game more. But I want to go try the video game now. Uh, roll to the Top, 7.5. This is a very, very simple roll and write game. It's a reprint of one that came out years ago, and you can kind of tell. It's it's so straightforward, but very fun as you're trying to fill in numbers, but they have to be uh, equal to or higher as they go further up a structure. Good time. Next up, Pollen, 7.5. A cutthroat game that looks so beautiful and serene and, and about pollinating flowers, but no, you are going to get in each other's way and try and get these majorities. It's a tense game. It's a reprint of Samurai the Card Game, uh, and you can tell it has that samurai tension, but I enjoyed it, 7.5. And then lastly, The Animals of Baker Street. This I gave an 8. This is a great family, a young family, uh, maybe kids, uh, you play with kids, right? Investigation game. You're the animals of Baker Street. It has some really good systems mechanically, but it has a lot of really good 
uh, exploration that you'll do as a family and discussion and whatnot. Well written, well produced. It's a beautiful yellow game, so it's an eight from me. There are other videos, of course, that I did, including the uh, six games I played so you don't have to, and a few other things, so make sure to go check those out. But that has been my week. I'm Joey Evans, and these are the games I reviewed this week. Animals of Baker Street. This is one that I, I reviewed with Camilla and Chris. This is where you are playing the animals in in a Sherlock Holmes thing, and it's I like this a lot more than I thought I would. I came in at an 8, but that could have easily been higher and probably will go higher with more plays. I really enjoyed this game, and this is a great family game. If you have kids, if you have nephews, nieces, anyone in your family you want to play a game with, this right here is definitely one to check out, and it was one that I would have overlooked if it didn't come here at the studio. This is a just a heartwarming, fun, enjoyable game. So definitely check this out. So, okay, those are the games I reviewed this week. Hey there, folks. I am Jeff, your tabletop tech here in the Dice Tower. And I gotta tell you, you have seen an awful lot of this ugly mug on the channel here in the past week or so. So I'm gonna real quick recap all five of the games that I've reviewed here on the Dice Tower channel over the past eight or nine days. Up first was Magna Roma. Now this is a tile placement city building game set in the ancient Roman Empire. And there is an awful lot for players to manage in this game. Multiple tracks you're trying to climb up, some score multipliers, monuments you're trying to build, citizens you're trying to collect. And it's just a lot for players to manage. There's also, uh, because this is a Kickstarter, there's some expansions and some upgraded components, which I've covered in that video. I really do enjoy this game quite a bit more so than some other Roman themed city builders. So arm yourself with some tomatoes and go check out that video. Up next was Deck Chairs on the Titanic, quite the opposite of Magna Roma. This is a very light uh, sort of random chaos game in which players are trying to move chairs around the deck of a inopportunely named uh, cruise ship. The game is okay. Uh, again, it plays out very quickly. It's it's pretty lighthearted, pretty silly, but with a theme and a setting that might put some players off. So go check out that video. Up next was the 2022 version of Fjords. This was a remake of a 2005 game of the same name. That was a two-player game. This is a four-player game, which has been upgraded with beautiful art at the hands of Beth Sobel. This game plays out in two phases. In the first, you're building out a map kind of like Carcassonne, and then in the second phase, you're expanding across that map, almost kind of like the ancient Chinese game of Go. The game is very light, but it can tend to drag out a bit, especially in that first phase. But again, it's a beautiful game and a nice, comfortable, casual experience. So check out that video. Up next, I teamed up with my favorite co-star, my daughter Melanie, to review Exploding Kittens. That's right, this is the first review of Exploding Kittens here on the Dice Tower channel. We have played a ton of this game over the past year here already. My daughter is now able to sort of grasp some of the more advanced tactical and strategic decisions that you can make in this game, and she has had a ton of fun with it. So we, we uh, reviewed Exploding Kittens, the Imploding, Streaking, and Barking Kittens expansions, and that is a very fun review. Up la the last one I reviewed is DEFCON. This is a modern take on Risk, as I kind of uh, reviewed it. This is from an Italian, uh, very small publisher and designer, again, out of Italy. I didn't go into this with very high expectations. I'm not a big fan of these, these war games, but this one did surprise us a good bit, although it also felt a bit unpolished, a little unfinished, and there were a lot of questions that the rule book just did not cover. So check out that video and all my others here in the Dice Tower channel, and I'll catch you again soon. Cheers. All right, so for me, first of all, we have tiny turbo cars, about racing little toy cars, and you're using one of those little Slide puzzles, oh, that combo does not work very well, unfortunately, five out of 10. Dream Quest, man, I wanted to like this so much. The concept's neat. It's a co-op game for a parent and a child, or an older person and a younger person, to go through. It's fun, but you, you play through it a couple times and then you're done. I, it just needs more, unfortunately, a six out of 10. Bargain Basement Bathosphere, that's fun to say, but the game itself is basically, it's a roll and write, and it's a really involved roll, right? So there's a lot of cool things. I just felt there was a little too much for me to get as excited about as I could. Six out of 10. Dorf Romantic. This is a game based on a very popular app, Dorf Romantic, about building a village. It is a cooperative tile laying game. It is the most stressless game I've ever played, I think. And that's what keeps me from giving it a higher score. 6.5, it's fine. 
I didn't hate playing it. I was in kind of a zen like, ooh, but there needs to be a little bit more meat. Some people are going to love it. Pollen. This is a, a remake of Samurai the Card Game from Reiner Knizia. A mean little area control game. Beautiful game, though. A 7 out of 10. Roll to the Top. Um, another one, this, that and Pollen are both from All Play. Beautiful productions. This is a remake of a roll and write that I really enjoy where you roll dice and write numbers trying to go up to the top of a building. Works really well. 8 out of 10. History Maker Baseball. This is just a me thing. This is a play-by-yourself stat baseball game. Fairly involved. But if you like baseball and you like stats, this one does it with fewer numbers than most. I enjoyed it. 8 out of 10. And then Scorecards, which is only getting an 8 because the quality is not that good. But this little card game of you playing cards back and forth and scoring them. Very simple. We're talking one of the most simple games out there, but a lot of fun. Back, It's really a cool little game from Mike Fitzgerald. I enjoy this one. 8 out of 10. I also took a look at the uh, Crimson Scales. This is a fan-made unofficial expansion to Gloomhaven. So I just kind of looked and see what was in those boxes. And then I did the best-selling games from January and February from Game Nerds. Um, so we used the data from them. Me and Spencer from Game Nerds took a look at those, and you can see what games sold the most in expansions. I did another board game term explained, and of course we have all our different live videos. And the big video this week was our top 10 games, me, Z, and Mike, that we replaced with other games. What are those? You can go back and check that out. Thanks so much for watching Week in Review, folks. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time on the Dice Tower.